our Day 7 coverage of Broncos training camp. George Stoya details Tim Patrick's season-ending ACL injury and shares what it could mean for the rest of the Broncos wide receivers room. Then we'll learn what mindset inside linebacker Jonas Griffith has brought into his first training camp with the Broncos. And finally, Super Bowl 50 champion Todd Davis breaks down Broncos practice alongside the Hall of Famer Steve Atwater. All that and so much more coming up next. Welcome to Broncos Training Camp 2022 with Steve Atwater. Here's your host, Alexis Perry. Today, the Denver Broncos will have a light jog through practice over the next hour and a half as they use the day to reset and regain their legs before getting back into pads tomorrow. Hello, everyone, and welcome inside the UC Health Training Center. I'm Alexis Perry, joined by my good friend from the Gazette, George Stoya, the Hall of Famer Steve Atwater, and Todd Davis will be along here shortly. But first, George, we have to start with the most heartbreaking news out of camp here yesterday when we saw Tim Patrick's knee buckle. He went down to the ground. Obviously, the entire team surrounded him. What was the reaction that you saw from this team? And what does that say about how this team feels about Tim Patrick? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a huge loss. You never want to see that in practice. And I think we all kind of knew immediately when he went down that it was a significant injury. And I think his teammates knew that as well. We saw the entire team go over and take a knee by him and obviously, you know, kind of console him. And, and I think it speaks to, obviously, the leader that he's become on yes. this team, uh, but also just his story. I mean, you talk about a guy that worked his way up through the practice squad played on special teams and finally got that big contract last year after becoming really the most consistent receiver the Broncos have had the past two seasons uh, it's just sad to see and, and it's going to be really interesting to see what they do moving forward to try and replace him because he is you know not only a great player on the field but a guy that I think is really beloved in the locker room and we saw that from Cortland Sutton and guys talking about it after practice yeah you mentioned trying to replace him you know 11 touchdowns over the last two years a guy who is available and reliable week in and week out so how does this team go about replacing a guy who is virtually irreplaceable? Well, it's going to have to be by committee, right? I mean, obviously, you're going to have to see Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, K.J. Hamler, who's coming back from an ACL injury. Uh, those guys are going to have to step up and kind of try and fill that void. And then, you know, you're going to have to have guys like Tyree Cleveland, Kendall Hinton, Seth Williams, guys that have been on this roster the last couple seasons uh, and really step up. And, and what an opportunity for those guys. I mean, it, it's going to be difficult. Obviously, Tim Patrick's a big body at 6'4". Uh, you know, there's some other big wide receivers on this roster, like I mentioned, Seth Williams is the yes. one that kind of sticks out to me. Uh, rookie last year, I think he's had a good camp so far. Uh, and then one dark horse guy that I've really liked his camp so far is undrafted rookie Brandon Johnson out of UCF. He had 11 touchdowns last year in college. Seven of those came in the red zone. He's a big body, a guy that can maybe fill a role for this team. So it's going to have to be by committee. But again, it, like you know, Coach Hackett said yesterday, what an opportunity for some of these younger guys to maybe try and fill that role. Yes, the depth at the wide receiver position. It will be looked at closely here over the next few weeks here throughout camp and leading into this 2022 regular season. Also another position where we're looking at the depth inside linebacker. That was something of concern throughout this offseason, given the fact that the Broncos didn't really address the position all that much. So tell us a little bit about the depth at that position and what you like about those guys. Well, obviously, Josie Jewell and Jonas Griffith, they're getting the majority of the first team reps right now. And, and uh, you know, bringing back Josie Jewell was a priority for this team. Even though he was injured last year, it looked like he was on pace to have a really good season right. uh, after that early injury. And then Jonas Griffith was a guy that we got to see you know, uh, you know, towards the end of the, the season there. And he's a guy that I think has come in and played really well in some different spots. Super athletic, really good in coverage, uh, really smart football player. And then you brought in Alex Singleton from the Eagles. Yeah. He's a guy that I think that they feel he can plug and play in different spots. Justin Stranad, another guy that I think has had a really good camp so far. Barrington Wade, the list goes on. So while maybe they didn't bring in uh, those, those big names this offseason, I think they feel really comfortable where they're at with those, those few guys up at the top. You mentioned Jonas Griffith. I was actually able to steal a couple minutes of his time as he headed out onto the practice field here this morning to learn a little bit more about his mentality throughout the first couple years of his career. Jonas, from an undrafted guy to grinding on a couple different practice squads to earning a starting role here in Denver, what has really been the mindset that's gotten you to where you are right now? Uh, just being consistent, honestly, and just staying true to myself. Probably those are the two biggest things for me is just trusting the process, first and foremost, and just believing in my ability, trusting the coaches, and just realizing that, you know, they have my best interests. 
How would you describe that your chemistry with Josie Jewel and how you guys are really commanding this defense together? It's great. We're both really super big competitors. You know, we try to man the best out of each, each guy and out of each other. You know, we compete every day to see who can get the ball out, who can make the most plays and things like that. And so I feel like we're drilling, gelling pretty well together, and I feel like it's going to only improve during the season. We've had a great day, heavy day of practice yesterday in full pads, but today it's a lighter day, jog through. What's really the focus during a practice like this? Mental. Keep it above the shoulders. I feel like today you kind of just let your body recover a little bit, but it's full speed mentally. That's what Coach says. Perfect. Thanks so much, Jonas. Have fun out there today. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Jonas Griffith, a brief interview, but, man, what a great guy. What are you looking for from him throughout camp here? Well, I, I just want to see him obviously learn the scheme. I mean, this is a new scheme, and, and, and he's not a guy that's totally familiar with starting a lot. Obviously, they brought him in last year in a trade really for special teams uh, and then obviously gets thrown into the fire there. And so I just want to see him get more comfortable. But so far, he's had a really good camp. Like I said, he's really good in coverage. He's a guy that's a really solid tackler, super athletic. They can do a lot of different things with him. Uh, and so I really like the way he's progressed. And, and I think it's interesting. He's got such a great backstory of not playing football really until you know his senior year of high school. School and then playing at Indiana State, uh, a smaller school. And so for him to have this opportunity is obviously big. And, and I, I'm really interested to see what kind of season he puts together. Yes, I have a feeling it's going to be a very strong season from Jonas Griffith. You know, one guy who knows a thing or two about going undrafted, working his tail off on a practice squad, and then earning a starting role. That is our guest here on the stage here with Steve Atwater today, Super Bowl 50 champion Todd Davis. Todd was cut three times as a rookie before becoming a three-time tackle leader for the Denver Broncos and eventually helped helping this team hoist its third Lombardi Trophy. In 2019, Davis racked up 134 tackles in his final season with the Broncos, and we are so glad to have him here with us today. Steve, Todd, take it away. Oh, thanks so much, Alexis. Uh, Todd, looking at yourself make those plays on there. Oh, got that pick, that pick six. I remember that one. Yes, sir. That's a pick six for sure. <laughs> beautiful play. Beautiful play. Well, welcome to the show. So happy to have you. I reached out to you, man. You got right back to me and said, hey, man, I got you. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, man. I wouldn't wouldn't uh, love sitting down talking to anybody else. Uh, you're a great man. So I definitely would want to come out. Oh, man. Well, I appreciate it, man. You see the kids out here playing. You got your, you got your son out here with you, man. The guy's a handsome, tall young man there having a good time out with the other uh, youngsters out here. Um, so looking out here at this team here, man, we talked about it a little bit before the show. You're excited about this, this, this season. You think they have a, a, a ton of potential. Uh, they talked in the pre just a, a moment ago about Jonas Griffith at the linebacker position, and you said you've done a little work with Jonas. Uh, what, what do you like about Jonas's game? Yeah, I was able to work with him a little bit this offseason, um, you know, take him through some linebacker drills and trying to give him all the knowledge that I had. Um, I feel like he's a great, a great player, um, a great guy, and I think that he has, you know, the speed, the agility, uh, the strength, uh, the mental toughness to be a great linebacker in this league. So I'm looking forward to really seeing him, you know, start the full season and really have a great year. Now, in your, in your opinion, all right, we got, we got all the, uh, the inside linebackers here. First off, Josie Jewell coming back uh, in his in his fifth season. Uh, Josie's gotten better each and every year. I think uh, we missed him last year with that torn pec. Uh, Alex Singleton. Uh, coming over from Philly, uh, got Jonas Griffith there. Uh, guy we just spoke about, we'll be talking more about him in a minute. Barrington Wade and Kanai Maga. I hope I didn't jack that up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the linebackers there doing their thing. Um, so yeah, you, you like you like Jonas's game. You, uh, you've worked with him. Uh, in, in your opinion. Who else needs to step up at the linebacker position? Because, I mean, it's not it's not it's the stone that Jonas is going to be the starter. Yep. Right? I yep. mean, who, who is he in competition with, in your opinion? Well, I think Josie's job is pretty locked and secure. Um, and I think you need somebody that can really help um, in coverage and really athletic, um, you know, to play alongside him. So I think that's where Alex Singleton comes in. Um, he's known for being able to, play, able to play in space and being a really good coverage linebacker. So I think the battle is really between him and Jonas for who's going to really take that other spot um, at linebacker. So what's the most difficult thing about, like, learning the linebacker position? What was, what was difficult for you, and what do you think uh, is difficult for those guys? Well, you know, it's so much more than just, um, you know, seeing a hole and hitting it. Um, a lot of times you have to make your, make your D-lineman right, and you have to be great in the run game, but you also have to be great in the pass game um, because, you know, there's a lot of dynamic running backs 
um, you know, in this conference and then also in the league that you have to be able to cover great tight ends. You got Travis Kelsey that you got to see, uh, you know, twice a year and be able to, you know, handle him. So you have to be great. Um, and then it's, it's really a mental game. Um, people don't understand, you know, that middle linebacker position is similar to the quarterback on defense. So I have to know what I need to do. I need to know what the D line needs to do. I need to know what Chubb, but also behind me, Justin Simmons and I have to be able to communicate. You got to be able to talk to everybody to be able to know that we're all on the same page. So it means you got to be a great communicator. Yep, you got you got to be able to talk and uh, be able to communicate. So, like, how difficult is that? I mean, you know, you got to make plays. You got to go through all this stuff in your mind and then have to make sure everybody else is, is in, in the right place at the right time. What's that like? I feel like that's really the toughest part. Um, a lot of guys are athletic enough um, to play play the game, but you have to be smart enough to be able to know what everybody else is doing. And then also you have to have enough experience and uh, conditioning to be able to get your point across. Because there's times where it's a eight play drive or a seven play oh. drive and you're trying to breathe and trying to tell uh, everybody on the team what the coach just communicated to you in your helmet. Then you also have to make checks based on the formation that just came out. So it's definitely a learning curve um, to be able to, to be a good communicator. And I feel like that's the toughest part of the position. So how did, how did you learn how to become the type of commu communicator? Were you always like that? Or, you know, was it at a certain point where, where you say, hey, I got to step it up. I got to I got to be able to get it out. Yeah, I was really I was really thrown in the fire uh, my rookie season. I think it was uh, Thursday or Monday night football. We were playing in Cincinnati and I started um, and I just was out there, you know, doing the best I could. But it definitely wasn't wasn't right. Uh, I remember one time going back to the huddle like, you know, guys, I'm gonna get it right. Like, you know, I'm gonna I'm <laughs> I'm make sure that I communicate better. Um, and, you know, everybody was like, you know, just come on, let's do your job. Um, but that really kind of instilled in me that I had to learn how to communicate and how to get everybody on the same page and get everybody right. Yeah, so you had the support of your team. That, that's always important to make sure, it, you know, uh, a guy who's just getting started, uh, you know, feels comfortable. For sure. Absolutely. And I think that's going to be a big thing for, you know, Justin Simmons and K-Jack um, to be able to help him out as well as Josie Jewell. Um, you know, they have a lot of great leaders and communicators on that defense already. So I think they'll be able to take a lot of pressure off of, um, you know, whoever's playing that other middle linebacker position um, aside from Josie. Yeah, so on, showing Kareem Jackson there. Uh, on the screen, uh, man, I was so happy that they signed Kareem Jackson back. Uh, and I really like uh, the young safety that, that we that we have here from Texas, Caden Stearns. Mm -hmm. But K, K Jack isn't done yet. He's not done yet. He's a guy, you know, uh, I always say he's not the biggest guy, but he's probably got the biggest heart uh, on the team. He's a guy who is, is fearless. Uh, you've played with you played with Kareem, right? Yep, sure did. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what was he like in the huddle? You know, he. I think he's a great guy, and he's really uh, one of those heart beat pieces of this defense. Um, I think the way he uh, attacks the game, the way he hits, the way he always brings the wood, like you see right there in that clip. Um, you know, he brings that tenacity, that energy that this defense needs. Um, and he's always available. Um, you know, he's stays very, he yeah. stays healthy. Um, he's consistent. You know what you're going to get out of him. And he's going to bring that energy that the defense is going to feed off of. Now, sometimes our linebackers, they would say, Steve, man, you hit me. Mm -hmm. Did Kareem Jackson ever get you friendly fire? No, I, 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 I can luckily say um, that I was able to escape the game <laughs> with, <laughs> with no friendly fire because um, I know that probably would have probably would have felt that for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Justin Simmons, the, the leader, the leader of the defense. Man, what, what, what makes Justin so special? What, what is it about him when he's on the field that guys respect him, listen to him? Uh, what, is it, what, what is it? I don't know if it's his work ethic or what, but everybody respects Justin. Yeah, I just think you know that he's going to give you 100% um, 100% of the time. Um, I think he's a great guy and a great leader, and he's somebody that guys can model themselves after on and off the field. Great, great man, Christian man, um, you know, has a great, great family. And I think he's just somebody that you wouldn't mind being on and off the field. So I think that's why it's easy for guys to follow him and easy for guys to respect him. Um, he comes to work, he shows up every day, um, and he's just a great guy. You know, it's amazing. I mean, I, I hear that sentiment about quite a few guys on the team, and, uh, and it goes to, you know, the personnel, George Payton and John Elway, make sure they're picking guys who have, uh, you know, high, high character. You know, uh, you're one of those guys too, T. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think that's great for the team. I think, you know, having guys with high character and like-minded individuals is really what builds the team to be able to be something great. I mean, you know that. You've been to two Super Bowls, and I know you've been a part of uh, many great teams, so you know how important that is. Yeah.
Hey, why you had to bring up the Super Bowl, man? You, oh. you, didn't, you didn't bring your okay. ring out? No, I didn't bring my ring. I, 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 uh, I was trying to be modest today. Ah, oh, you don't want to, <laughs> you want to, uh, like, man, he got that little ring over there. I got the, the ring twice the size of his. <laughs> man, I should have brought it. No. Next time. You got to have me on again. I'll bring the ring. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I like, I like seeing those big jokers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't feel in camera. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my little ring. Still, you know. That's, that's the championship, yeah, man. You know Champions, it doesn't matter how big they are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I, I feel like at one at some point, my ring is going to be small. They're going to have rings that cover two I fingers know, right? or something. <laughs> <laughs> they got to outdo, you know, the last thing, right? For sure. Yeah. Well, we got uh, Michael O.J. Moody, uh, 13 over there. You see him at the cornerback position. Man, I'm looking for a big year from him. And from what I've been hearing from the coaches, he has had a great offseason. Um, and... They're looking to utilize him quite a bit in his defense. I think that they should. Um, I think that he has a lot of potential. Um, I think that he um, showed his spark, you know, a few times last year. So I think he'll be um, a great addition to the secondary and really, you know, help them be the number one secondary in the league, which they definitely can be. Yeah, and he's he's physical. He's physical. Yeah. You played with OG Booty too. Yep, I sure did. Yeah, I sure did. Yeah, he was, he was, uh, I was here when it was his rookie year. Um, but I felt like even then we saw the potential that he had um, and the physicality he played with. So I'm just excited. I think that year three, year four mark is when it really clicks for guys and they really are able to like take a big step and big, big leap as far as how they play the game. Yeah, speaking of big leaps, Bradley Chubb. This got to be a big year for him? Got, yeah, it got to be. And, I, and I'm so excited for him because I know that that's what um, he thrives on. He thrives on. Um, you know, everybody looking at him and everybody watching him and everybody wanting to see him make a play. I think that's when he's going to show up and make the best plays. He's had some injuries that have limited him, but I, I know that he's 100% ready to go for this year. Yeah. Well, uh, also, they got uh, 56 out there on the edge, Baron Browning. What do you think about his game? I think he's great. Um, I was excited that he's he... He's a big guy, too. He's... I thought he might play in the middle again uh, this year because of how well he played in the middle of last year. Um, but I think playing on the edge would be good for him. Um, like you say, he's a big body, um, a dominant presence out there on that edge. And then um, Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb, and then you have Baron Browning to the list. I think oh, man. that's going to be a heck of a squad. They're going to have a heck of a squad, man. Yeah, you, like you say, you got Bradley Chubb, you got Randy Gregory, mm -hmm. Baron Browning, uh, Malik Reed. Benito, Malik Reed. Yeah. And then you also got um, Jonathan Cooper. You know, and then the rookie Chris Allen out of Alabama. This guy looks like he's a physical specimen. Anxious to see, you know, what he's able to do once once we start doing some live stuff here. But that's that's a deep room. That's a deep room of uh, edge rushers. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. We brought in Nick Benito. Nick Benito, the mm. the, the rookie out of Oklahoma. There, uh, he looks like he's been doing well uh, out out in practice. He'll have an opportunity to to show what he can do, uh, especially in the preseason. And uh, I would imagine all these guys would uh, contribute some during the season just because the edge position is one of those positions that, hey, those guys, they're not going to play every single play, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they go all out. And then, hey, they got to they gotta get a break after a couple plays. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They got that I never understood that, that, though, man. Like, DBs, we can't come out of the game. Man. But. Can I get back a break either, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for a little bit of love. I'm tired too, coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember one time uh, we were in a, in a playoff game and, uh, you know, guys, they were driving and some of our defensive, come on, core, core defensive line, I'm not going to call their names out, but I saw them on the sideline. It was third down, man. I got to that sideline. I was like, hey, man, mm -hmm. look, I'm third down, y'all got to be in the game. No matter what. And they're like, you're right. I know. They knew it. You know, <laughs> they knew they weren't supposed to be on the sideline. Y'all are big players, baby. Yeah, we need you. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was good. <laughs> yeah, Pastor 10. Yes. His game is is it's such a high level for yep. him to be just a second year player. Yep. And you know I think he's a, an inspiration to you know the the young guys this year. And really I think some of the vets they, they really they really respect his game and you know know that he brings more to the game than just his his talents. You know his ability to lead the younger guys and also hey help help with some of the older guys too yep for sure i think that um he has all the pieces he needs to be a great corner in this league um i remember um being able to watch bradley roby and his and his journey and how how good he was and i feel like pastor 10 
um, you know, is maybe even better than Bradley Roby was coming in, helping us win that Super Bowl early in his career. Um, but what do you what do you think about him? I know you've seen a lot more corners throughout your career than I have. Uh, where would you say he ranks among like players that you've seen in their second year? He's special. I mean, he's in the top two, two or three players that I've ever seen, uh, you know, and, and I never played with Dion, but Dion and I, Dion Sanders and I came out the same year and I've always, I, I love, I love his swag. I, I love <laughs> everything about Dion's game because uh, he was getting in, in receivers' heads. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, I don't think Pat Sertan does that very much. I don't know if he does a lot of talking or whatnot, but uh, he gets right in their hip pocket. The guys, they can talk all the noise they want to, and Pat's going to be right there with them. Yeah, I'm and, on you. And making plays. Uh, and, you know, that, that, that speaks louder than anything. I mean, can you make plays against guys who are those noise talkers? And, you know, he's been proven to do that. Um, and, again, he's just plays at such a high level. His father, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, well, he, was, he was a Pro Bowl cornerback as well, so he got trained by one of the best. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's not fair. Why didn't my dad play? <laughs> Why didn't my dad play in the league, man? Pops. Hey. We got some we got some talking to do, man. Hey, well, hey, you getting it started now? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You getting it started? Yeah, my son will definitely be in the league one day. You'll be interviewing him one day too. Yeah, oh, very nice. <laughs> well, man, they're going through some special teams drills on the field right now. It's kind of laid back. People are kind of relaxing here on the hill. I see a No Sean Marino jersey, Elway jersey, Champ Bailey, Jerry Judy, and the late DT. Yeah, you got Derek Wolf there. Man, Broncos country showed up. Showed out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, such a beautiful day. You see Corlin Sutton catching uh, that pass down the middle there. Now, getting back to the linebackers here, let's, let's, let's talk about some of these edge guys. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about Bradley Chubb. Randy Gregory. Have you seen any film on him in... I'm sure you watched some film on him. And, uh, have you, did you play against him? No, I didn't. I don't think I played against him because we played the Cowboys a long time ago. Yeah. So I don't think I've ever got to play against him. Uh, but from the from the film that I see, um, you know, he's a hard-nosed, nasty DN. That's what you want on the outside, uh, you know, rushing for you. Um, and I think he does a great job of setting the edge um, and making it hard for um, – Anybody to really break his contain. You can see the speed, speed moves right there. He's quick. He's aggressive. Um, I love the energy that he plays with. Um, I think you know, to be a great player in this league, you got to feel like you're the man. I definitely feel like he feels like he's the man when he's out there on that edge. Oh yeah, plays with confidence. For sure, that's a must. So I think him and Chubb, um, you know, working together, running some games together. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, you hear the. Audience clapping in the background there. I think the guy just brought it up uh, to, to talk. I don't know if that's Russell Wilson. Who is, no, Russell Wilson's right there. <laughs> the guys are, uh, that's Coach uh, Coach Dwayne Stoops, the uh, special teams coach, getting the guys fired up. Special teams is a big part of this game. Um, teams that I've been on who've been great, we've had great special teams. we had guys who could start but are playing on special teams. Yeah, special teams is, um, you know, if you're trying to make the football team or you want to, um, you know, really solidify your, your space on the roster, I think you have to be great at special teams. That's where I got started. Um, I knew that, you know, I wasn't going to be a starter right away. So whatever job I had um, on special teams, I needed to make that my number one priority. Um, the year we won the Super Bowl, that was my main role. I started two games that year, but for the majority of the year, I was, super, I was the special teams captain and gave everything I had um, on special teams. I think that's what later opened the door for me to become a starter of the year after that is because of how hard I worked and how dedicated I was to special teams. Yeah, man. And, you know, you get surprised when you see guys on teams and, you know, they're, they're not starters and they don't want to play special teams. Like, well, what do you think you're – what else you got to do? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what you got to – you get paid. That's how you get paid now. Exactly. This is your job, and they're giving you a, a, a nice salary. I think you play special teams until it's your time to start. I think that's, you know, that's, that, that's definitely not asking too much of somebody. And I understand that you were the man in college, um, but it's a little different. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to work your way in. And I think the benefit pays off. You see a lot of guys that started on special teams and then make their transition to be um, a big-time starter. But I think it's rare that you see guys who 
um, don't want to play special teams eventually become starters. I feel like they kind of fall off for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And it seems like maybe it's a hard work issue. I don't know what it is, but those same guys who don't want to play special teams but feel like they're starters usually end up falling off yeah. the roster. Yeah, because, I mean, after a while, if you don't win that starting position and you're not playing special teams, what what used to does the team have? You know, you're for kind sure. of a, you're taking away from a position from someone else. Yeah, they're showing Brandon McManus uh, on the screen a moment ago. Man, what was it like, uh, you know, being with a guy who you knew was consistent as, as a kicker? Yeah, B-Mac was money, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was always money. We knew he was going to make his kicks and um, get us the points that we needed. Um, you know, he's my neighbor still. Is he really? Yeah, we live right down the street from each other. Me, him, and Wolf all live uh, uh -huh. pretty close to each other, so I see him all the time. And, uh, you know, he's still looking good. He's getting old, but uh, I think he's still I think he's still money. Is he the tallest kicker you've ever seen? You've uh, ever met? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I think so. He's pretty tall for a kicker. Yeah, he's tall. Yeah. I see him coming. I'm like, ah, oh, he's not that tall. Oh, guy, right, face, neck, neck to neck. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty <laughs> tall. Yeah, man. Russell Wilson. How you doing? I'm ex I'm excited for him, man. I think I think he's gonna be a great addition to the team. I know people have talked about it before. Um, but just the qualities he has. And I think it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for the, you know, the wide receiving core because they are so young. Um, being with somebody who is um, that commanding of a, of a leader and, you know, I think it'll take some time to get used to it. But once, once everything clicks and they all get in the same rhythm, I think they're going to have a dynamic offense. Yeah, it, it's amazing because uh, sometimes, you know, fans think that, hey, He's here. It should happen right now. But, man, it, 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 you're right. It, it takes a while. It may take three, four, five games before they, you know, really get into a groove. But I definitely think that groove is coming, and it's just a matter of when. But and when, and when, it, when, that light, when, when the light goes on for, for everybody and they're on the same page, man, it's, it's going to be hard to stop. Yeah, it's going to be great. Can you imagine when they click and you see Russell Wilson rolling, rolling out a pocket to a wide open Jerry Judy oh. 90 yards down the field? Oh. I can't wait. It's going to be some great football to watch. Yeah. And uh, yesterday's practice, man, Montreal Washington, the, the rookie out of, out of uh, Samford, man, he's he's out here showing out. Yeah, they definitely have they have a deep group of guys, man. I would hate to beat George Payton and try to figure out who to who to narrow the team down to because I feel like they have so many guys. You talk about the wide receiver position. You talk about the outside linebacker position. Um, you know, they have a really deep roster right now, and they just have to figure out who's going to be the best fit for the team. But that's a, that's a good problem to have, though. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be great in football, it, you got to have competition at every position. Yeah. You got to have everybody, you know, knowing, that, hey, we're competing. Now, obviously, we got, we got the starters kind of kind of etched in stone there. But uh, you know, I think guys once they know they're competing, they're gonna they're gonna work a little bit harder in practice. Yep, I think everybody should be like a, just a little bit nervous. Yeah, a little bit nervous know, uh, about their job and their position because the guy underneath them or the guy beside them is so is so good. Um, like, I know we have two great running backs that are gonna be sharing time, but you know, I know both of them wants the other one to do good, but you know, both of them wants to be the premier running back. I think that's just how we are made. Nobody really wants to share time we do it because it's it's best for the team that's gonna help the team win but you know i think they're having a healthy competition there is going to really help to uh you know keep pushing that offense forward yeah and i think they were like that last year you mm -hmm. know uh, although jo javante was a rookie he may have looked up to melvin some i, I would imagine just knowing that he, he's been a pro bowl running back and has been in the league for a while many times as a, as a rookie you look up to that guy that's in front of you uh the guy who's been playing and has some success so uh and, and now i would imagine you know they probably still have that relationship but javante feels a lot more comfortable after having uh, played a year and he's seen a, a high level of success as well yeah i think he's ready um you know that first year you're always nervous about you know can i perform at this level and then when you come out with the year that he had, um, I think you're just ready to get the next one started because you know how great you could be. Uh, yeah. Speaking about um, you know him playing behind Melvin Gordon and how much of an influence that you know he may have had on him or just being able to look at to him, who did you look at to, look up to coming in? Oh, Dennis, uh, as Dennis Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dennis Smith. He was uh, he was the man, and he and Ronnie Lott. I don't know if you know Ronnie absolutely, Lott. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They both played at USC together, and. Strangely enough, I didn't know who Dennis was before I got here. Okay. You know, but I knew who Ronnie was because the 49ers had kind of high profile and 
Uh, but then when I got here and I saw Dennis play and the way he practiced, I was like, man, who was this guy? Uh -huh. and, uh, and he kind of just took me under his wings and uh, really showed me the ropes. This great family guy. Um, he taught me how to be a pro. Good. Okay. Yeah. And what about you? Uh, so at the linebacker position. At the linebacker position, when I first got in the league, um, I had a 10, 10, 11 year vet by the name of Curtis Lofton when I was in New Orleans um, that I really was able to learn from and watch how he practiced um, and how he, you know, gave me some game about how he was able to make his, you know, 10 year career. Didn't quite get there, but I was able to soak up a lot of it. And I think that's what helped me um, to have, you know, the career that I had. And then when I got here, um, you know, I really looked at, you know, Dan Trevathan and Brandon Marshall, Marshall were the starters at the time. Um, and watching uh, those two guys really go after it um, and try to get better every day of practice um, really inspired me. Now, are you and Brandon about the same age? Yeah, I think Brandon is one year, one year older than me. One year older than you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you guys, man, I love watching y'all play, boy. <laughs> y'all should be bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy, man. We still we still talk, um, you know, quite a bit and, uh, you know, have a good relationship. But I definitely had a lot of fun uh, playing next to him, and we had a lot of, a lot of good times. Yeah. So, I mean, as an inside linebacker, I know you talked about the part of being cerebral, having to be able to get everybody together, get everybody lined up, know what's going on. You got to be a thumper, too. Oh, absolutely. You got to be I mean, You got to be one of the, you got to have that, you got to have one of the nastiest mentalities on the team at the inside linebacker position. Yeah, because you got to hit almost every play and you got to be ready for it. Um, you can't really care about, you know, your body, your head, or your, your arm. You worry about that tomorrow. Today, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to hit somebody. I'm going to try to take somebody's head off. And that's just how it has to be every, every play. I think all the best linebackers are a little bit crazy. You think about, like, Dick Buckus or some of the great all-times Ray Lewis. They're a little bit nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you got, they got a little screw up there you somewhere. You know, just, just a couple. But you know how to pull it together to be able to be a productive person in, in, uh, in society. Yeah, well, Todd, it's been awesome, man. I really appreciate you joining me. And, Thank you. Hey, continued success to you, my friend. Again, beautiful family. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at some games this year, too. Absolutely. I'll be there. All right. All right. Back up to you, Alexis. Thanks so much, Steve. We are seven days into camp, which means that we are officially at the halfway point. So if you haven't had the chance to get out here, we really hope that you will. The Broncos, they are on the field every day except for Sunday, tomorrow through next Thursday when they host the Cowboys for their joint practice. The parking lot opens at 8. The gate here opens at 9 o'clock. So get on out here, Broncos country. We really hope to see you. Well, Steve, it was a light practice day here today. Jonas Griffith said earlier in the show that this is really a mental day for these guys. After a heavy practice yesterday, kind of take us through the player perspective of this. Would you like this kind of format? Or once the pads come on, would you like to stay in those pads throughout the rest of training camp? Oh, man, as a player, every break that you can get during training camp, you take. And uh, so, yeah, as a player, I'm sure they really appreciate it. Make sure that they keep their legs up underneath them. And Coach Hackett spoke about that earlier, just how he wants to keep the guys fresh throughout camp. So uh, it's definitely a good thing. And I think in the end, the guys will get more out of it than if they're pounding and just going hard every single day. I think they'll be able to focus, concentrate better uh, during practice and get more out of it. Like I mentioned, we heard from Jonas Griffith earlier in the show. What an impressive guy. He's a guy since the moment he arrived here in Denver. I feel like you've just been in my ear about him because you love this guy. So looking at the film from him from last year, what did you see him add to this Denver defense? And what kind of mindset have you seen him bring into camp so far? Well, uh, really, it, it was the effort more than yeah. anything. The guy gave effort. He was in the right position. He was physical. He made solid tackles. Just a playmaker. And... You know, those guys stand out on film, and apparently he's been doing something right because he's running with the ones. And if he didn't know the defense, he wouldn't be running with the ones. So uh, the coaches have uh, confidence in him to have him, have him out there, especially with some of the other guys that we have on the roster at that position. So uh, he, he's doing the right thing. He's working hard. I, I think he's going to be a, a, a steal of a, of a trade. This is going to go down as one of the great, greater trades that we've made over the years uh, with Jonas Griffith uh, once – everyone uh, realizes who he is and what he can do because he, he's, he's a heck of a player. Yeah, I'm really excited to see him on the field here tomorrow. It will be a heavy day out here at the UC Health Training Center. So, Steve, what position groups are you really watching when the pads are on? 
I, I want to see the tight ends. Uh, that's an interesting, uh, some interesting competition at that position. Uh, you have Albert Okwebunam coming back from last year. You know, no fans, no longer here. Uh, we also drafted Greg Dosich. Uh, Eric Sobert has been making plays out here. Uh, Andrew Beck, who fullback tight end, yes. he's been making plays. So uh, that's going to be an interesting competition. But one of the big things, they're going to have to be able to block as well. They're going to have to be able to block well. Exactly. Well, Steve, thank you so much for your time here today. Great stuff with Todd Davis. We really appreciate it. That is all the time we have for Broncos Training Camp 2022 for the Hall of Famer himself. Our guest, Todd Davis, today, George Stoya, and our amazing crew behind the scenes. We thank you all so much for watching. We hope that you will tune in tomorrow. KOA's very own Ryan Edwards will be here on the stage with Steve Atwater. We'll see you then.